Good morning. My name is Emanuele Di Lorenzo from the Georgia Institute of Technology. The focus of my talk is the emergence of striations in the North Pacific circulation. This is work in collaboration with Haoluo at George Tech and some collaborators from the University of Hawaii, which are listed below. A little bit of background. This is a map of the mean geostrophic surface zonal currents obtained by combining satellite and drifter observations between the period 1992-2002. This type of data has been used by Maximen Koita in 2008 to show that the mean or time average circulation is noisy and characterized by uh, jet-like features or striations uh, that are apparent also in this picture. Nowadays, uh, regional ocean modeling simulation uh, like ROMs for the Pacific at eddy resolving um, uh, resolution are able to capture uh, these type of features or this type of noise also in their long-term mean uh, from 1950 here to 1976. Uh, this is a picture, again, of the mean surface zonal current. If we focus in a region like the Central and Eastern North Pacific, and we conduct a regional nested simulation with ROMs over uh, a period of 50 years, and we looked at the 300 meter uh, mean zonal currents, we find that the signature of these striations is even more apparent in the subsurface, uh, even without applying any high-pass filters like what was done in the original Maxim and Quetal paper. Now, these type of regional simulation have been widely and successfully used to characterize uh, the low frequency circulation in these regions, along also with the eddy variability or eddy statistics uh, along the eastern boundary. And these are documented, uh, at least in these studies which I was involved with. Uh, and in fact, actually, there's this study by Andrew Davis, who is also presented as a poster in this session entitled Low Frequency Eddy Variability in the CCS. Now, based on these studies, we are confident that these type of regional model simulations are able to capture realistic features of the ocean circulation, including uh, perhaps these striations. So then we'd like to ask the questions uh, of how do striations emerge in the time average circulation. And to address this question, uh, our approach is to use a realistic ocean model like ROMs to explore the spin-up dynamics of the striations. And by spin-up dynamics, I mean if we take a regional simulation, realistic simulation, and we started from a state of rest, how do these striations establish themselves in the time mean? And I believe that looking at the spin-up dynamics could reveal some important physics. And in addition to that, if we combine the spin-up dynamics with uh, some uh, model sensitivity to different things like bathymetry, nonlinearity, and coastal geometry, which aim to simplify some of the physics of the model, we should be able to uh, isolate what are the important physical mechanisms or ingredient, if you want, uh, that are important in establishing uh, the striations in the time average circulation. So if you look at this particular animation here uh, that's showing the 300 meter zonal currents, you see that a lot of the energy seems to, uh, in these kind of striation-like features, seems to originate from the eastern boundary. And in fact, the hypothesis that we like to test with our numerical simulation is that striations develop as linear or nonlinear beta plumes from the eastern boundaries, where the eastern boundaries, in our case, provide a localized quasi-steady vorticity source uh, for these plumes, and that these vorticity sources along the eastern boundary are energized or driven by the instabilities of the meridional eastern boundary current. With that in mind, a couple words about the model configuration. Uh, this is the ROMS model grid, the bathymetry. We use a 20 kilometer horizontal resolution, which is at least uh, eddy admitting. This is uh, for the control run. Uh, it has 30 vertical layers. The model is in, uh, initially started from a state of rest with a uniform stratification in temperature and salinity, which is characteristic for this region. Uh, we drive the model with seasonal cycle forcing, in this case only a seasonal cycle forcing in the winds without any buoyancy surface fluxes, so really we only have a mechanical forcing. Uh, we also uh, used closed boundaries here, where the o instead of open ocean boundaries, and this is to make sure that the uh, model uh, dynamics in, inside the, uh, the domain is not contaminated by spurious effects of the open ocean boundary uh, configuration. Now this particular control run along with all the sensitivity experiments are integrated for a period of a hundred years so that we can both look at the spin-up dynamics as well as the uh, time uh, equilibrium statistics. And so if we look for example at the sea surface height mean 100-year mean in this region, uh, we find that it kind of reproduces a gyroscale circulation with an eastern boundary current, a return western boundary that is more confined here at 180 degrees, 
And if you compare this type of sea surface height mean with, uh, with observations, actually this is a, it compares very well, uh, for example, with the mean dynamic ocean topography, both for the shape of the circulation as well as the magnitude of the circulation. So with that in mind now, uh, let's look at the spin-up dynamics of uh, this control run. And the way I would like to explore the spin-up dynamic is by looking at the zonal uh, velocity at 300 meters and show you a movie of the progressive averages, meaning that if we start the model from year zero, we're going to integrate the model the first year, and I'm going to show you the first snapshot average of the first year. Then we're going to integrate the model to year two, and we're going to show you the average of the first two years, and then the three years and four years, so that basically you see how the time average uh, striations emerge in the circulation uh, with these progressive averages. So this is the movie here, and what you see is that uh, over time, here in the progressive average, the striation kind of emerges. Uh, as uh, we had shown before in the in some snapshots, uh, you can also see that some features like here, this is a continental, uh, it's a ridge topographic ridge here, uh, are important in the sense that it produce uh, striations along this ridge. But you can also see that striations do also develop from the eastern boundary, both along here and the Hawaiian um, uh, islands here. So given that uh, there's definitely topography seems to play a role, let's ask the question, how important is that role? So is bottom topography critical for the striations, especially in the interior? Uh, to address that question, uh, we will perform an additional model simulation. In this case, we have a flat topography in the interior with 5,000 meter depth, and we have a continental boundary with the continental slope, which is given here uh, along both the American boundaries and the Hawaiian islands. So let's look at the spin-up uh, movie for this particular experiment, we see that the striations uh, continue to develop. Uh, they seem to develop from the eastern boundary into the interior, at least they draw their energy from the eastern boundary. You can see it very clearly here. This is instability of the eastern boundary, and then they sort of develop in the interior. If you look at the magnitude of the striation, we find that it's comparable to the full uh, control run. And um, not only that, uh, the, the, perhaps the, the main important difference is that the striations here seem to be more coherent and less noisy. And so in some sense, the topographic features in the interior are important in that they produce some uh, noise, if you like, in the striations, but they're not critical in terms of the development. Now, some authors like Schillax and Chalton have argued that these striations are an artifact or analysis of the eddies that are, are traveling westward along these preferential uh, paths which are set by the instabilities here, the eastern boundary current. And so we like to explore whether indeed that is the case or if striations can also emerge as quasi-linear beta plumes uh, without the need of having kind of nonlinear eddy dynamics involved. To explore this, we are going to perform the flat slope experiment again, but this time we will reduce the magnitude of the, of the forcing by, one, uh, by a factor of one. So in other words, we try to put the model in some kind of weakly nonlinear regime. And so this is now the movie of this particular more weakly nonlinear simulation. And you can see that the striations continue to develop. Uh, now their uh, source, the eastern boundary source, is more clear, and also they are more coherent in the zonal direction. We can push this even further by coursing the resolution of the model to 50 kilometer, which is less eddy admitting or almost non-eddy resolving. And if we did that, this is the simulation, you could see that you know there's an instability here that goes on and you have slowly the development of striations in a very kind of uh, linear fashion here. And so over time, uh, these striations kind of fill the interior of the ocean. If you further analyze the dynamics of these, uh, uh, you will find that uh, this uh, development is very much consistent uh, with quasi-linear beta plumes. So in some sense, then, uh, these striations can develop as quasi-linear beta plume from the eastern boundary. Uh, however, one important thing is that for the beta plume to survive, you need to have a localized uh, vorticity, potential vorticity sources, in this case, along the eastern boundary, which then get elongated through the beta drift dynamics. So the question is, does the eastern boundary coastal geometry and forcing provide localized sources of vorticity for the beta plumes? To test this idea, we will perform a similar integration, but now we put a wall, uh, uh, just a straight wall, so that there's no features in the geometry of the coast that can anchor uh, these uh, vorticity sources in a localized way. Now if we look at the spin-up of this model simulation, this is uh, again in the fully nonlinear regime, uh, we find that, you know, in initial phases, you do get the development of things that look like striations. Um, 
but as, as the model progresses forward in time, uh, these kind of things uh, seem to disappear in the long term mean. So here you see the instabilities, the kind of striation path, and then as the model progresses forward, uh, they kind of disappear. So in fact, if we now look at the long term mean of this case experiment, we find that the striations are not present anymore. Therefore, it seems to be supportive of the idea that if you don't have these localizations of sources of vorticity due to the geometry of the coast, then over time, uh, essentially, the, in the time average mean, these striations disappear. So going back to our hypothesis, striations develop as linear or nonlinear beta plumes from eastern boundaries, where the eastern boundary provides the localized uh, quasi-steady vorticity source that is perhaps energized and driven by the instability of the meridional eastern boundary current. This hypothesis uh, seemed to be consistent uh, with uh, our model results. And we can also explore some of the theoretical support for this uh, interpretation um, in two studies, um, one by Walker and Petlowski that examined the instability of a meridional boundary, meridional baroclinic current, and another one by his Strovita in 2008 that explored the radiating instability of a meridional boundary current. Now these studies both showed that uh, meridional currents are unstable, and in particular this second study uh, shows how the radiating instability has an asymmetrical, uh, is asymmetric in nature uh, with a zonal component of the wave that is much larger than the meridional component, and they speculate that this could indeed lead to the development of jet-like features in the large-scale flow away from the boundary, which is consistent with what we see in the model experiments. So to summarize, I think we have a meridional current like the eastern boundary here in the North Pacific. This meridional current is unstable. Uh, these instability produce uh, vorticity anomalies uh, that for the particular case of a realistic geometry like this, uh, these vorticity sources get uh, some kind of anchored or localized in space along the coast where the capes are. And as such, then, once you anchor or localize these vorticity sources, then the beta drift dynamic can elongate uh, these vorticity sources into beta plumes that eventually uh, fill the domain. Now, this interpretation of an instability of the meridional current that energizes the sources of vorticity for beta plume seemed to be the most consistent uh, with the numerical result and supported also uh, by some of the theoretical uh, work that has been done previously. So in conclusion, I think that our hypothesis um, that striations develop as linear or nonlinear beta plumes from eastern boundaries, uh, which provide the localized quasi-steady vorticity sources that are driven by the instability of the meridional eastern boundary current, this hypothesis seemed to be consistent both with numerical and theoretical results. Thank you very much.